Okay. Okay. Hello and welcome everyone uh, to the team FRCR to be session. We are starting after a break and uh, yes, we might feel a bit rusted, but let's start now. Uh, thank you to all the volunteers for today. We have Dr. Sayan, Dr. Charul, Dr. Rohit, Dr. Sandeep, Dr. Ubada, and myself and Dr. Iman as a back volunteer. So uh, without wasting any more time, Dr. Sayan would start examining Dr. Charu. Go ahead. Yes. Hi, Dr. Charu. Can you hear Hi, me? Dr. Sayan. Yeah, I can. Okay. Am okay. So okay. yeah, you're audible. So okay. ideally, actually, I, you should take mouse control from me. But the thing is that most of my cases are from my, like I have got the cases. So I don't think they will be that much scrollable or not. Okay. okay. So let's see. We'll start with the first case. Okay. All so right. the first case is of a 31 year old male who presents with chest discomfort. This All is right. your image. Okay. Uh, so I'm provided with a frontal radiograph of a skeletally mature patient. Um, I see that there is a um, complete opacity of the right hemithorax with trachea pulled towards the right side. So uh, possible differentials in this case would be um, either a pneumonectomy or a total lung collapse or maybe um, agenesis. If the trachea yeah. was central or not pulled, then we would have thought of effusion or a mass lesion. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, no, carry on, like carry on, like don't stop. Consolidation, yeah, um, uh, possible. To, the, the left hemithorax, the left lung field is clear. The cardiac shadow mm -hmm. appears normal. Uh, okay. The left diaphragm is visible, looks normal. The right one is uh, not seen. Right. Um, hmm. So you, you thought of some lung pathologies, right? So what else can you think of? Okay, so apart chest, from the... um, chest wall pathology, if I have to go um, to, uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking of uh, a chest wall mass or a pleural mass. Um, okay. Uh, like maybe a Ewing or a... Um... Right. So like, uh, if you're thinking of something from the chest wall, what are the like you know the uh, uh so helpful signs like maybe uh okay uh signs um no what i'm trying to say what will what are the pointers towards a possible chest mass or lesion originating from the chest mass or suppose from the chest wall as you're saying anything anything like that is seen in this case or like uh is like do you think it can be something else also uh, honestly, I'm not able to make out if it's a chest. Okay, then what will you what will you what will you do next? I would like to proceed with a CT scan. What kind of a CT scan? Or I would I, a contrast CT scan to um, assess if there okay. is. A... Okay, fine. So this is the CT image. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is uh, okay. This is a single image. Okay, I'm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was telling. I forgot okay. to say this is like my own cases, so yes. they will not be scrollable like usual okay okay so uh, it's a post contrast axial uh, section uh, taken at the level mm -hmm. of pulmonary artery i see that right. there is uh, um, a large uh, soft tissue mass possibly arising from the anterior mediastinum and right. uh, okay. um, it is um, enveloping the um, at the hilar structures the aorta but it's not in in infiltrating the vessels, it's attenuating the vessels. There is mild uh, pleural effusion. Uh, there is also um, uh, some uh, necrotic, uh, non um, heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue lesions towards the left side. Um, in a 30 year old. Towards um, the left side. Okay. You mean this one, this area? Yes, correct, correct. Okay, huh. um, okay, fine. So, in a 30 year old male patient, I'm thinking of. Uh, um, uh, Teratoma yeah. or a thymic uh, invasive thymoma. Um, Why invasive, by the way? Um, uh, okay, fine. Next. What are the different? What will be your differentials, and what so will you do? Highlight is not a differential in this case, and uh, okay. uh, thymoma and teratoma is a possible differential. Uh, another. Okay. Uh, 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 after thymoma. Lymphoid uh, doesn't okay. appear to be a lymphoid lesion. Okay. Uh, you just tell right your right differentials right. and what is your principal differential and your management. Okay, so my principal differential in this case is either a thymoma or a teratoma. And okay. uh, I would uh, proceed by doing an intervention, uh, an image guided biopsy to assess, right. uh, um, uh, characterize it. And uh, 
uh, mm-hmm. discuss it with the pulmonary MDD. Okay, and uh, the re- uh, why not a lympho? What was the reason that you told? Lymphoma is usually homogeneously enhancing. This is very heterogeneously enhancing, and it's a large um, mass completely. So, so this is the mass, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, and what is this? A collapsed lung, possibly. Right. So this is the lung collapse. Okay. Or hmm. okay, fine, fine. I think we'll directly proceed to the next case instead of discussing the answer now. That will save some time, probably. Okay. Okay. So this is your next case, okay? okay. Eighty-year-old male really with a lesion in the floor of the mouth. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So um, I'm given a, a cross-sectional HRCT window image of a, a eight-year-old patient. I see that there is a large mass in the uh, right upper lobe, uh, with the possible. Uh, may I understand that this is a contrast image or? Um, this is no, as you said, is most likely. I also forgotten. This is most likely an HRCT image only. I'll see the next image if there is contrast. But anyway, it, you it's see a this possible window. peripheral calcification with more chunky mm-hmm. calcification in the mass right. and it's mm-hmm. a significant amount of emphysema, central lobular emphysematous changes in the upper lobe. So right. possibly, uh, emphysema with a right lung, uh, right upper lobe mass could be a pancos tumor. We we will have to assess further with a contrast CT scan, see if there is a, it's encasing any of the chest wall structures. Um, okay. Pancos tumor means a primary lung malignancy. Correct, correct. Okay, what are your differentials? Um, what uh, was the history? Uh, 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 80-year-old mother, okay, floor of mouth. Okay, metastasis would be a differential and mm-hmm. uh, a posterior mediastinal lesion would be a differential. Uh, like posterior... Um, is, it from the, is it likely that it is from the mediastinum? No, no, not really. I mean, um, I was thinking on the lines of an... Uh, uh, ganglion neuroma or something like that. Uh, neurogenic. Okay. But it is, you're, you're, you're saying it's a lung lesion, right? That's what I'm just yes, saying. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, fine. I'll just see if the next image looks like. Okay, next image is of the floor of the mouth. Okay. So okay. Th- this was the lesion that the patient presented with. Okay. 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 So this is. Uh, okay. Hmm. So what do you think of the full thing? Because we can. This is like. Uh, like now you have to just say what is your final diagnosis and we'll discuss the management and move to the next case. Okay. So mm-hmm. um, uh, this is a... Uh, uh, two cal- images, I think. This is the second image. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, is This looks like a lesion in the base of the tongue. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm uh, not able to ascertain if this is a um, malignant lesion which is causing metastasis in the lung. Um, what are um, the other possibilities? Um, no, you said you are not able to ascertain. Then what else are the things that are possible? Yes, yes. Um, so I'm, um, it's okay. Take your time. No problem. Um, Okay, what will you do next? Uh, image guided biopsy. Okay, and then? Um, then um, if it's uh, discussed with the M- pulmonary MDT or uh, maybe proceed for a PET CT scan considering there are multiple lesions. Okay, okay, sorry. Huh. Okay. D- d- discuss at the what MDT? Sorry, I couldn't catch that part. Pulmonary MDT and maybe okay, proceed pul- a PET CT scan because there are multiple lesions. Okay. So if you get a biopsy done, it's not necessary that we discuss at the MDT always. We just see what the tissue diagnosis is and we'll probably discuss, find, uh, finalize the management from there on. It. That's okay. okay. No problem. Okay. okay. So this is the next case. 41-year-old uh, patient with a history of left pneumonectomy. Okay. okay. Hmm. Um, so this is... This is slightly is- tough, but it's okay. You just see what is happening, what you think. And remember the history. Just go on. Yeah. Uh, for again, can I please a uh, forty-year-old uh, patient with ne- pneumonectomy? Right. pneumonectomy? Thank you. Okay, so uh, post uh, contrast axial image at the level of pulmonary artery, there is um, uh, enhancing uh, pleural thickening, along with um, some mm-hmm. soft tissue at the uh, pulmonary bifurcation. Um, there is fluid uh, attenuation um, in the left uh, visible upper uh, lobe. Okay. 
I am thinking okay. right now in the terms of <laughs> mesothelioma, um, a malignant pleural. In terms based, of what? Sorry, I couldn't hear a you. A malignant pleural based lesion like a mesothelioma. Okay. There is no invasion of the rib cage or. Uh, so it's a post-op case, okay? Just right. to remind you. Oh yes, yes, okay. Mm. It's okay. Carry on. What do you think about the vessel that is seen here? Uh, I think there are a uh, surgical clips over there. So right, uh, exactly. Apart from that, it is uh, diffusely attenuated. Like there is some kind of a fibrosing. Uh, yeah, that is at the bifurcation, as you told. How, yes. how is the trunk looking? Uh, it looks. Trunk doesn't appear dilated. It appears. Uh, no. What are the ways you tell whether the trunk is dilated or not? More than three centimeters. It doesn't look more than three okay. centimeters. Okay. And uh, since you cannot measure in this, obviously. Mm. So mm. for eye estimation. Uh, oh, uh, okay. It's, it's larger than the aorta. So yeah, okay. It's yes. dilated. So then okay. pulmonary artery hypertension. Okay. Okay. So this is the lung window. I don't think it carries any extra information. So I'll just show you the last image from this case. Okay. Um. So there is a reflux into the uh, into the exactly. uh, liver, uh, which is due to right ventricular state, possibly because of right ventricular strain. And uh, right. Anything else you see on this image? Uh, a flash hemangioma. The reflux, was a good, the reflux was a good pick. Yeah. Is it the flash hemangioma in the left lobe? Okay. There, no. So there is a lesion in the left uh, in the left lobe probably. So what are the, don't just say it's a flash hemangioma. I mean, what are the possibilities of All the right, lesion? Okay. So, uh, right. So it could be a metastatic lesion. Consider, right. consider we are uh, looking at a pneumonectomy case. So it could be right, possible. Exactly. So what are the differentials? Um, uh, metastasis, uh, hemangioma. Right. Or, uh, okay. So this one is the metastasis and the lung shows post-op changes with uh, pulmonary hypertension, right? All right. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So what will you do next? I would uh, do a PET CT scan, a CT guided uh, imaging of the lesion to ascertain if this is metastasis and then proceed um, uh, with a, a multidisciplinary discussion or uh, treatment. PET CT. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. This is the next case. 63 year old man with a history of right lobectomy. Another post op case. Okay. 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 Uh, what do you see? Right lobectomy. Okay, so right. uh, significant uh, collapse in the um, uh, significant loss of volume in the right on the right side with the herniation of um, that is that is expected. It's a post op case. Yeah. So, uh, there is a bit of um, mm -hmm. on the left side we see that there is ground glass opacity with some uh, exactly mm -hmm. uh, thickening of the interlobular interstitial septa and some pulling of the like traction bronchiectasis. Considering it is a yeah. lobectomy, so it could be a radiation. The, the lobectomy is on the right side. Correct. So post post radiation changes maybe on the on right. The what, one one is the post radiation changes. What are the other differentials? Um, uh, interstitial. Um, interstitial. Mm -hmm. Carry on. Disease, uh, can we think of interstitial lung disease? Okay. Uh, then what else? Um, so why uh, why, uh, why do you think the patient infective etiology? Um, right. Okay. Next. I mean, the patient had a lobectomy. So what may be the cause for the lobectomy? Possible uh, malignant mass. Right. So, what else can the left one oh, be? A lymph it doesn't appear like a lymphangitis carcinomatosis, but there is no nodular okay. thickening. Uh, okay. Um, so, okay, fine. So, okay. what will you do next? What is your management? Um, I would. Um, mm -hmm. uh, straight away discuss with the MDT because um, uh, I need. Yeah, but like in MDT, they will ask the radiologist, what is your what is your opinion? So they will ask you for some suggestions regarding how to go about it. So I'm trying to uh, rule out a radiation. Uh, right, that is excellent. You're trying to rule out radiation in these changes versus? Etiology, I would like to understand the history. Infective is like, infective is still okay. They will treat with some medications and it better. What is something more dangerous? Um, which you should be immediately, you know, taken care of. Uh, pulmonary embolism, in fact, due to embolism. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Uh, we'll see Dr. the next. Dr. Asayan, uh, uh, okay. we have one minute left. If you want okay. to make a quick case, go ahead. Okay, middle-aged man with fever and headache. Okay. Just see and tell so, what you right. feel. Right. So there is uh, obscuration of the right uh, uh, front radiograph, right obscuration of the right um, heart border, possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, just say what are the possibilities. Consolidation, infective etiology in the right, right. middle. 
Um, yes. What will like, we do next? Like to do CT scan to understand the. That is next. Okay, fine. What? So infective. That's what you're saying, right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay, Dr. Sabat, I don't think I have a time for one more case, right? Uh, yes, it's already 15 minutes. And because we okay. want a nice time for the feedback as well. Excellent case. Right, right. Thank you. Uh -huh. No, I think she also did very well. So I'll just start from the beginning. So the first case, as you told, is a uh, right hemithorax is completely opacified. So one possibility is that Dr. Charu told the uh, lung lesions. That is absolutely correct. Other than that, there is a possibility of mediastinum also because there is the mediastinum right heart border cannot be seen separately. So okay. as we saw in the CT, it yes. is an anterior mediastinal. It is basically multi-compartmental. So yes. whenever it's multi-compartmental, the first possibility is a lymphoma. So okay. the differentials, the rest of the differentials, she told absolutely right, thymoma and germ cell tumor, but she excluded non-Hodgkin's or lymphoma. But this was actually a case of lymphoma. Right. So <laughs> lymphoma, <laughs> no, that's not a problem. So lymphoma, as we all know, that it can have smoother lobulatory margins and there may be some low density areas. So it is not that uh, always it will be homogeneous, that is Hodgkin's. If it is non-Hodgkin's, okay. it will have some, uh, this thing, necrotic areas also. Non-Hodgkin's is more aggressive. And there will be maybe some calcifications also sometimes and chest wall invasion and all, okay. Next one was the lesion, the floor of the mouth. So what I was trying to show you was that both these lesions look similar. As you picked up, absolutely correct, there are some calcifications in the right lung lesion. And this lesion also has some calcification. So basically, it was a soft tissue sarcoma of the floor of the mouth with lung mats. The other differential was very remote possibility of infective, but that's just for the sake of giving a differential. Yeah. But most likely, this will be metastasis only. We can just do a biopsy as mm. we did in this case, and it ultimately came out to be metastasis. And then obviously, since it is already metastatic, patient will probably go from curative intent to palliative intent in terms of chemotherapy because it's not operable anymore. Okay. 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 So next is the patient with post-radical left pneumonectomy. This was a slightly tough case, but I think you did well. So this uh, left lung had a case, had a carcinoid, basically. I didn't tell you what the pathology was because then it would have been probably easier. So what is happening is basically pulmonary hypertension is developed because of carcinoid syndrome. As okay. you rightly pointed out, the pulmonary trunk is dilated. There is reflux. And this lesion that he was calling a hemangioma, that is actually an arterially enhancing lesion which okay. is from the carcinoid. So it is basically a metastasis, recurrence rather. We attempted a biopsy from this lesion, but the problem was the patient had a very high INR and uh, we, like it was not that easily approachable. So I think we dropped the idea of the biopsy and the, this was considered to be a recurrence and patient was like the plan of management changed from there on in. So okay. actually these cases, uh, there is not much we can discuss in the MDT because the moment we think there is a metastasis or anything else, the intent of treatment right away changes. So not much can be done in such cases. Right. So the other possibilities were, these are just for the sake again, infective and fibrosis. Fibrosing mediastinitis are kept as differential because there was some uh, soft tissue thickening in the mediastinum, as you saw. But yes. once you see the liver, obviously that is not a possibility. Yes. So these are just some uh, uh, differentials and how to start. So dotated PET CT is an important way of assessing carcinoid because it helps in detecting uroendocrine tumors. So that is one thing we can probably say along with MIBG. And there are some markers also, which we can probably write like 5-HIA and chromogranin A, which will be raised in carcinoid syndrome. So this was the next case, right lobectomy. That was very good on you that you said this can be radiation changes. So the whole point was that what I was trying to tell you is this can be radiation, other possibility can be recurrence. So oh, okay. that is a very difficult thing to decide for a radiologist. The only thing that the... Uh, medical oncologist asks or the radiation oncologist asks us is whether this is a recurrence or whether this is radiation induced changes. So there are some papers on that. The way to differentiate, there are some points like if the margin of this lesion is convex and if this bronchi are filled up, there is filling up of the bronchi. Those are the pointers towards a recurrence rather okay. than radiation induced changes. Radiation induced changes will usually have straight margins and the bronchi will be free. Okay. So there will be no uh, this thing, loss of air bronchogram. And also the follow-up cases, if there is a dramatic increase in size, that will also point towards a recurrence. So this was actually, I think, taken to be as a recurrence, yeah, because there was a, some loss of air bronchogram with convex margin. And then again, the management will change a bit from there on in. Last case was just like a simple, this thing. This was obviously a consolidation only. And the differentials you already told, like this thing. Uh, can be infective and all. And then we can do a follow-up extra after four weeks just to see 
whether it is resolving with the antibiotics. If it doesn't, we change the regimen. That's all. Okay. Beautiful cases. It was excellent too. It was a lot of fun discussing these with you. Okay, then I should stop sharing, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, Dr. Sand. And very well done, Dr. Sharul. Very well done. You know, um, yes, yes. I know, you know, for the first time to come and sit in the hot seat is a very uh, terrifying experience. So well done with you. <laughs> and uh, you can now start sharing the screen. Okay. And as you said, uh, Dr. Sand, we have been missing the fun. This is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But now the real pressure starts now. It is very easy to be an examiner. But exactly. It's very difficult. <laughs> True. No, I know the whole audience yes. would know what it is, except the person yes, in the yes. hot seat. Yes, Dr. Charu, yes, are, yes. are you starting to share? I, I have start. I have I have already shared the screen. Is it uh, are you guys able to see? No, it? no, it is not yet seen. Oh, uh, how okay. Um it's okay. <clears throat> it's okay. You have pressed the share screen, Dr. Charu? I did, I did, yes, I did. And it asked you the options, right? Yes. Uh, um, yeah, it did. Okay. It's good now. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, very simple one. Uh, no history provided. Let's just uh, discuss the uh, findings. Okay. and the So this is a frontal chest radiograph of a slightly mature adult patient. I can see bilateral parahylar opacities uh, involving by both the lung fields, predominantly towards the mediastinum. Uh, going by the presence of parahylar opacities, uh, giving a uh, sort of battering appearance and thinking of the possibility of pulmonary edema. Uh, the, uh, so uh, the differentials for this will be cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic. So in that case, I'm looking at the cardiac shadow. It doesn't appear to be that much dilated. So I'm thinking of a non-cardiogenic possibility of pulmonary edema. Other differentials for this will be if the patient is having fever or any history of immunocompromise, I'll think of the possibility of infective etiology. Uh, so I'll uh, go back to the history of the patient and see the previous radiographs for comparison. Apart from that, um, uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll discuss with the... A 30-year-old male patient with chronic cough. So uh, how would we narrow it down a differential? Yeah, so uh, since the patient is having chronic cough, I'm thinking more towards, inclined more towards thinking of the possibility of an infective etiology. So in that case, I will... Uh, suggest that the uh, patient can be taken up for bronchoalveolar lavage to see the causative organism and uh, if possible suggest cross-sectional imaging for further characterization of the lesions and uh, if the patient is having a history of immunocompromise then my differentials will be uh, PCP or pneumocystis canina pneumonia other than that the other differentials will be other infective causes like bacterial organisms. Okay. Actually, this was um, they did uh, they did do a bronchial lavage and it was a PAP. Um, okay. Dr. Okay. Charul, uh, we will discuss the, uh, the discussion. We can, the, huh. right. Yeah, that is. So, uh, moving time. on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, I saw the history. Okay. 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 So this is a routine Sorry. chest. I, I moved on to. Uh, um, Sorry. Uh, I moved on to the next case. This is the case. Okay, the okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is a female with a routine chest radiograph. So I'm provided with the frontal chest radiograph, 30 year old female patient. Uh, there appears to be bilateral reticular nodule opacities predominantly towards the middle and the lower zones, along with some straightening of the left heart border. Uh, though the image is a little bit so uh, i'm just trying to appreciate the breast shadows in this case so both the breast shadows appear to be there so in this case uh, i'm thinking of the possibility since it's, there is no background history provided it's a young female patient i think there is an element there may there may be an element of left lower lobe collapse in this patient along with some opacification in the retrocardiac region with bilateral para with bilateral retinal changes and some interstitial septal thickening so in uh, seeing this, uh, my differentials in a young female, one will be an infective etiology with uh, 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 peribronchial spread involving bilateral lungs. Other possibilities, if the patient is having, I'll in, compare with the previous image, if the patient is having any history of weight loss or any other fe uh, sinister features, I'll think of the possibility of a malignancy with uh, bilateral lymphangiotic spread. In my usual practice, I suggest uh, uh, cross-sectional imaging and correlation with the patient's history to see if there is any uh, history of fever or any weight loss to 
uh, to further establish the diagnosis. Okay, we do have cross section imaging. Okay. Okay, so there is uh, bilateral uh, calcifications involving the pleura as well as interstitial septal thickening. So uh, these features are pointing towards the possibility of uh, the, the differentials at this stage can be pneumoconiosis or uh, infective etiology with uh, like, uh, micro, like um, uh, PCP pneumonia, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. So I like to go for bronchialveolar lavage in this patient for further establishing the diagnosis. And uh, depending on the um, uh, depending on the reports, we'll, uh, we'll discuss the case in the pulmonary MDT and proceed with the management. Considering we have more of a basal uh, predominant in this, yes. in this case, so yes, what, yes. The, what more differential could we think of? Yeah, and okay. So, right, right. So, the other possibilities, uh, since there's basal predominance, uh, there can be a possibility of bronchiectasis or rheumatoid Change, but rheumatoid changes, but there is no subsequent, uh, no adjacent bony changes as such. Other than that, there, uh, it can be drug induced or mm, drug induced changes so are you possible. Focus on the calcification, what um, okay, silicosis, calcification. yeah, uh, calcification can be there in case of pneumoconiosis or like silicosis, asbestosis. So it's a female patient. So uh, if there is a relevant occupational history, then I'll think more in terms of uh, occupational lung disorders. Okay. And, okay. Um. Okay. So this is a chest radiograph. Is there any history or like just, I'll just start with the uh, I I will uh, provide you maybe later. Uh, <coughs> okay. The description of the radiograph. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am provided with the frontal chest radiograph of a slightly mature adult patient. Uh, so, uh, bilateral lung fields, there are some patchy opacities seen in both the lung fields. Uh, the, uh, uh, most of these opacities are centered in, uh, the, uh, along with some possible underlying fibrotic kind of changes. There are some uh, areas of uh, okay, there are some areas of uh, uh, prominent bronchovascular marking seen as well. And looking at the background bones to see for any bony changes. So uh, there is there are not there is not much evidence of bony changes seen in this case as such. So going by this picture, uh, I'm thinking of this, uh, I will write, uh, I like to correlate the previous images. Uh, this can be some chronic fibrotic changes affecting the lungs with uh, some amount of uh, maybe traction bronchiectasis and also the background lungs, uh, some of the areas look to be uh, very radiolucent. So there may be some underlying, uh, like underlying lucencies or cystic or maybe emphysematous changes also. So in my usual practice, I like to uh, collate the history and proceed further with cross-section imaging to further characterize the lung fields. Okay, we do and have a question again. Okay. Okay. So there, there, those, so those areas are mainly uh, this uh, patchy ground glass changes with some areas of plural based opacity opacification. So going by this picture, I'm thinking of some chronic process like maybe a chronic organizing pneumonia affecting bilateral lung fields. Uh, the other differentials will be asthmatic pneumonia or. Uh, uh, eosinophilic pneumonia or uh, uh, other possibilities like uh, any kind of, if the patient is having any uh, relevant history, then maybe drug-induced changes. So in my usual practice, I will uh, uh, suggest uh, discussion with the pulmonologist for the possible, uh, for pro possible uh, uh, management and uh, suggest bronchialveolar lavage to see for any possible causative organism in the patient. This doesn't look to be any uh, malignancy per se. Uh, it looks more like more on the line, lines of a chronic uh, chronic changes with uh, ground glassing and uh, some amount of plural based opacity. So mostly I'm thinking that on lines of some chronic changes, though I'd like to correlate with the previous Im images also uh, in this regard. So why do the history of um, fever and cough, uh, can we think of uh, some other differentials? 
Okay, so with fever and cough, we can think of uh, infective changes like uh, bilateral parahyalur changes, infective maybe due to pneumonia with uh, viral pneumonia is a possibility or atypical pneumonia due to any cause. Okay. And that is that can also be uh, seen in the bronchial lavage and taken up from there. Okay. This okay. is slightly difficult. Uh, okay. So this is a frontal radiograph of a stately mature patient taken in expiration. I am seeing bilateral lung fields appear to be... Uh, there's some amount of air trapping I feel in the right side, which appears to be more loosened than the left side. Other than that, the rest yeah, of the lungs appear. Oh, look, that's uh, projection. Not yeah. Just positionally, yeah, not significant. Okay, okay. So in my usual practice, I like to see the uh, background bones and the lungs. So lungs appear to be grossly unremarkable. And uh, uh, the bones also appear to be unremarkable. There is no change in the mediastinum as well. So... Uh, I, I'm going through my review areas, which include the base of the lungs. So there is some opacity seen in the left retrocardiac region. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So there is an opacity in the left retrocardiac region. So I, in my usual practice, I like to correlate with the previous image if possible. And if it is uh, an acute presentation and if the patient is having any sort of fever or uh, anything uh, that points towards an effective etiology, I like to think in those terms. Otherwise, if the patient is having any other serious symptoms, I like to do cross-sectional imaging uh, to see further for further characterization of the lesion. Okay. Okay. So there is a the the, the esophagus appears to be, I think, dilated, and uh, apart from that, okay. So there is some dilatation of the esophagus. Uh, I think that is the only thing in this image that I can see. Yes. And yes. Uh, so since there's esophageal dilatation, we, so I'm thinking of the possibility of an achalasia, which uh, in my usual practice, I like to suggest uh, the possibilities for achalasia, maybe primary achalasia or pseudoachalasia. I suggest uh, uh, endoscopic evaluation to and also full full imaging to see for the possible cause of the achalasia. Though, and there is some soft tissue thickening also within the within the dilated lumen. So this is more points towards a malignant etiology. In my usual practice, I suggest endoscopic evaluation and discuss the case with the gastroenterologist. If I say that the esophagus was collapsed on the side and this is, uh, what other differential can we think of? Okay, if the esophagus, so other possibilities can be a lymph node in this region or maybe a cystic lesion, which has effaced the esophagus. So that can be a duplication cyst. Uh, Though it doesn't typically look like a duplication cyst in this case, in, in this uh, with this picture. Uh, other than a duplication cyst, what other cystic uh, difference lesions mm -hmm. could be considered? Okay, other possibilities can be neurogenic, but I am not seeing any obvious communication with any neural foramina as such in this image, or mm, there can be. Uh, possibility of a necrotic node in the posterior mediastinum, which is, uh, or maybe a diverticulum, but in, in that case also I need to need to do a barium swallow to see for the, uh, to see for the contrast with the lumen or to see if there is an outpouching. And then at the same time, this suggests an endoscopic evaluation. Okay. Dr. Charul, next case would be the last, okay? Oh, okay. 35 year old female gradually worsening dyspnea. Okay. So the patient presented with gradually worsening dyspnea in 30, as a young female patient, I can see, uh, I'm providing the frontal chest radiograph. I can see there is some amount of lucency seen in the left upper lobe. Though, and the rest of the lung appears to be uh, grossly unremarkable. The medial stream appears to be unremarkable. There is a linear opacity which is seen, tubular opacity which is seen in the left upper lobe with uh, proximal to the uh, lucent area. So I'm thinking of the possibility of a bronchial atresia in this patient with some mucus or some mucosal thickening within the left upper lobe bronchus causing distal uh, oligemia, I mean distal lucency. 
uh, apart from that, the How rest of the okay uh, for then we'll just suggest cross section imaging to see okay. for uh, whether there is a mucus seal in that. Okay, so there is left left upper uh, left upper lobe appears to be loosened, and uh, I like to see the mediastinal window. Okay, so yeah, as we can see that there is a there's most likely to be some kind of a uh, uh, bronco seal within the lumen which has uh, or some mucus plugging which has resulted in uh, uh, which has resulted in uh, hypoaeration of the distal bronchus so this probably needs endobronchial evaluation and sampling if feasible uh, to see for the exact source of the uh, source of the obstruction and uh, needs to be taken up by the pulmonologist okay um, sh shall I stop here or can I do one more? No, uh, I think we can start the feedback. Okay. So um, starting with the first case that was that we've already uh, discussed, that was a pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, mm -hmm. uh, which should have rightly commented. Um, then the second one was a um, 30 year old female that was, um, uh, this was, uh, the differentials were perfect. The description was amazing. The, just one more differential was uh, alveolar microlithiasis. So this was alveolar yeah, okay. microlithiasis. Yes, yes, alveolar microlithiasis. I was saying pneumoconiosis continu continuously. Correct. But even yeah, that yeah. is a good differential that is there. Yes, the yes, yes, right, so right. Is, right. Hmm. Uh, the next one was a 30-year-old female. Um, again, so uh, this was perfect, absolutely well described. Uh, everything was great. And uh, same differentials, whatever you said, uh, mm -hmm. kryptonizing, organizing, uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. pneumonia and uh, COVID. So. Okay, fine. Okay, yeah. COVID, yeah. Presently, yeah. Fourth one was uh, again. It was a, a retrocardiac mass, very well picked mm. up. It was uh, the other view was an uh, inspiration view, and this was to show that it is better seen on expiration. The mass right, is right. well exactly. seen mm -hmm. on and this was a bronchogenic cyst. Okay, so bronchogenic cyst is also a type of duplication cyst, no? Correct, correct. So, um, yeah. yeah, you. you Rightly said that it's either a esophageal duplication cyst or a yeah okay cyst. okay. Um, then the last one was um, this was perfectly described again. Uh, it was a uh, mucus plugging bronchial atresia, which was uh, leading to a okay. high ventilation and uh, um, lucency hy hyperlucency on the uh, left upper lobe. So okay. oh. perfect. All the cases were very brilliantly presented by you and, oh, no, uh, no, really nice really nice cases really nice. thank you dr charul a very nice cases um if you can stop sharing the screen and now the next set of volunteers is dr sandeep and dr rohit yeah hello yes. can you hear me? yes i can hear you loud and clear yes yes dr Shara. can you yes. hear me yes we can dr rohit you are going to examine dr sandeep first so dr rohit yeah, yeah. please start share your screen Can you see my screen now? Not yet, but maybe in a few seconds. We cannot. Just. Yeah. Can you see now? No. Okay. Can you see now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. Okay. Uh, uh, my first case, uh, this is my collection. So the patient presented with a history of fever, cough, and uh, shortness of breath. Okay. okay. So uh, this is the chest radiograph of the patient. Okay. Uh, this is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally mature patient who presented with cough, fever, and shortness of breath. And the most striking abnormality are uh, the opacity noted in left lower jaw with this uh, linear uh, streaks inside the opacity and uh, uh, left uh, CP angle also appear obliterated. No evidence of any pleural uh, effusion on right side, no pneumothorax, uh, patient, uh, visualized bony stretches appear normal. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, Skeletal mature patients, I'm here old mid patients with cough and shortness of breath with opacity in uh, uh, left lower joint surrounding the left head border. I think of some infective process. I will take down the case further with the 
CT chest. Okay. The patient also have uh, associated fever. Okay. So I will just show, show you the CT images. So these were the CT images of the patient in yeah. lung window. Yeah. Uh, the most striking abnormality in this is uh, tear within the mediastinum, uh, pneumomediastinum. And uh, 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 the lung field at this level shows uh, diffuse ground glass opacification. Uh, okay. uh, so I can uh, think in terms of uh, rupture esophagus. Okay. And so, uh, uh, this is the second coronary reconstruction of the same patient. This air, air around the cardiac shell, air around, uh, along the mediastinal lining and okay. extending clearly into the chest wall and maybe into the neck. Uh, okay. With the uh, diffuse ground glass pacification in bilateral uh, visualized lung fields. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this can be when. Uh, one, uh, like uh, I already told you, it can be due to rupture esophagus, but uh, that won't explain this diffuse ground low glass specification in bilateral lung fields. Uh, other thing I have seen, uh, uh, the similar appearance in uh, post-COVID patients. Okay. So, can you summarize the findings and the diagnosis? Uh, uh, Pneumomediastinum pneumo with the diffuse ground glass specification and the lung fields. Uh, uh, I will take down this case further uh, for the evaluation of like uh, rupture esophagus and or any. So how do you manage the patient hmm? or confirm your diagnosis? Uh, not, uh, sorry, I'm, I don't know how to manage it further. Right. Uh, I mean to say, you, uh, would you advise some test or uh, some blood test or some other things which can help in the diagnosis? Yeah, in uh, mostly this patient uh, like diffuse ground low glass patient that uh, uh, will have uh, low uh, uh, will have low saturation. So uh, mostly, like in my setup, if uh, this is a post COVID patient, uh, they require uh, uh, controlled ventilation. On the both lungs. Okay, okay, okay. Very nice, very nice. So I, I will, I will proceed to the next case. So uh, this is a patient, old patient, old female, uh, presented with epigastric pain and reflux. Okay, this is the skygram of the patient, frontal view. Okay, this is the, okay. Just can you repeat the history, please? Epigastric pain. The patient presented with epigastric pain and uh, reflux. Okay. Uh, this is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally major patient. Uh, the most uh, striking abnormality, again, I'm seeing like uh, uh, double, uh, 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 there is an uh, opacity and uh, along the right head border. Uh, and Other than degenerative, uh, degenerative changes are seen in the visualized bones, no pneumothorax, uh, left uh, costal filmic angle appear blunted, I don't think in uh, left side mandibular effusion. Uh, again, I'm thinking of some uh, uh, retrocardic pathology or since reflex is there, the patient can have in, like ecclesia cardia or dilated esophagus. I will take down this case further with the uh, uh, CCT chest. Okay. So CT of the patient uh, was done and I will show you the CT images. So these are the CT images in uh, uh, reconstruction as well as the actual images. Okay. Uh, and these are the exhale coronal and sagittal images. Uh, uh, the most striking abnormality in this is like uh, a herniation of the stomach into the uh, into the mediastinum. Mm. Mm. Uh, other than this, uh, everything up is normal to me. Okay, so what is your diagnosis? Uh, Paraesophageal hernia. Okay. 
uh, other differential diagnosis or other possibilities which you would like to keep it? Diaphragmatic, there is a traumatic history, can be diaphragmatic hernia. So, no history of trauma. Mm. Mm. Or it can be like uh, 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 hernia leading to the volvulus of a stomach. Okay, okay, okay. We will proceed to the next case. Okay. okay. Uh, the patient, uh, middle-aged patient presented with history of shortness of breath. Okay, shortness of breath. So these are the chest x-ray. Okay, this is a middle-aged patient uh, who presented with a shortness of breath. Uh, the most striking abnormality in this x-ray are, uh, there are uh, curvilinear uh, your uh, rounded lucencies in bilateral uh, lung field predominantly in lower zone, uh, suggesting uh, bronchiectasis. Uh, I will take down this case further with the HRCT chest. Okay. So, anything else apart from the... <coughs> uh, Other than like bilateral lungs appear hyperinflated. Okay. Uh, rest appears unremarkable. Okay, okay, okay. And... Uh, what about the lucencies? Can you describe them further or any other feature which is present? Lucencies uh, like they are uh, rounded, uh, suggesting the like uh, bronchi cases or dilated bronchi. Uh, some of them showing the uh, like uh, air, air fluid level or they are uh, plugged with mucus. Okay. So what does that signify if there are these lucencies have air fluid levels? Um, cystic bronchiectasis. Okay, we have done the CT of the patient, and uh, these are the CT CT <coughs> images of the patient. Yeah, these are the coronary formatted and axial uh, images of the patient. Uh, there are uh, dilatation of uh, uh, dilatation and uh, thickening of the bronchi predominantly in uh, bilateral lower lobes. Uh, basal segments. Uh, lungs appear uh, hyperinflated, suggesting the uh, changes of COPD. Uh, some of the uh, uh, bronchiectatic cavities are uh, partially plugged with a mucus, and few uh, soft tissue attenuation nodules uh, noted in the visceral sample. Uh, so, it suggests some uh, 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 the soft tissue attenuation nodule can suggest uh, like some infective process. Okay, so what are your diagnosis? Final diagnosis? So cause of uh, bronchiectasis? Cause of bronchiectasis, generalized bronchiectasis can be like uh, uh, lower low. Sorry. No differential, my mind is totally blocked. No differential coming to my uh, mind right now. So, what are the different uh, etiologies of bronchiectasis? Can be like cystic fibrosis, it's upper and middle lobe. Okay. And can be infective. Okay. And other other things, other causes of uh, bilateral bronchiectasis? Mm, sorry. Okay. How would you manage the patient? I will uh, inform my confining to the referring clinician and refer to the uh, pulmonary MDT. Okay. okay. So the next case is a patient, uh, middle-aged patient presented with history of uh, cough and hemoptysis. Okay. Uh, this is a frontal radiograph uh, of a middle-aged patient who presented with cough and hemoptysis. There are uh, multiple rounded opacities uh, noted in bilateral lung uh, fields predominantly in mid and lower zone, more on uh, left side. Mm. Left bilateral coast of any angles appears blunted, uh, no evidence of any pneumothorax. Mm. Uh, Visualized bone, uh, oh, sorry, uh, bones uh, appears normal. Uh, so, a middle-aged patient who presented with hemopsis and cuff and uh, uh, rounded opacity bilateral, it can represent like uh, pulmonary metastasis 
or or in diffuse infective pathology. I will mm -hmm. take down this case further with the CCT chest. This is the CT thorax images of the same patient. Okay. Uh, 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 there are soft tissue attenuation uh, uh, lesions uh, noted in bilateral lung cells. Uh, most of them show, uh, showing the uh, cavitation within, uh, uh, suggesting a possibility of uh, septic emboli. Okay, there is no history of fever. Okay, uh, then it can be a, a, a metastasis, cavitatory metastasis. Okay, so, but there is no history of any malignancy, known malignancy. Okay. Sorry, Other patient you would like to consider in case of multiple bilateral cavitary lesions? In a female patient. Uh... Can be uh, a patient is smoker. Can I? No, it's not yeah. a smoker. Yeah. It can be like uh, some patient fungal. has some uh, destructive process in the paranasal sinuses. Vaginal granulomatosis. Uh, so, how would you confirm, or uh, how would you like to proceed with the uh, with the Management part. Uh, I will inform my finding to the clinician and uh, advise further observation. Like they can uh, take a biopsy and uh, confirm histopathology. Okay. So we are moving to the next case. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rohit, this would be the last case. Okay, okay. So this patient presented with hemoptysis. So this is a frontal chest radiograph. Okay, this is the frontal chest radiograph of a skeletally major patient. Uh, uh, there is a uh, radio dense uh, lesion uh, noted in uh, right lower jaw, which is surrounding the right heart border, and another uh, uh, radio past rounded or radio past also noted in uh, uh, left uh, lower jaw, and there are. Uh, multiple uh, small linear uh, 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 radio densities uh, noted over uh, right uh, lung base or maybe the uh, upper abdomen uh, suggesting surgical clefts. Uh, if the patient had a previous uh, history of surgery and now the lung lesion it can represent metastasis. I will uh, proceed uh, further with the contrast density. So, what are the malignancy you are suspecting in case of a this patient? Can be uh, CAGB or uh, 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 or a primary uh, bronchogen carcinoma. Okay, okay, okay. So these are uh, <coughs> below the diaphragm. These are surgical clips in. So any other malignancy you would like to consider as a primary uh, source? Uh, liver, liver malignancy can be like LCC. Okay, 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 okay. Well done. This was a case of uh, uh, prior liver malignancy. You can see the surgical clips, and these were the <coughs> metastases to the liver. Okay. Uh, the previous case was a case of Wegener granulomatosis, which are further uh, correlated with NCA levels and uh, biopsy. Okay. And uh, this was a case of uh, <coughs> asthma related uh, bronchiectasis with scanty infection and uh, mucus plugging. Yeah. Case three was uh, hiatus hernia, so which was uh, very well diagnosed by you. So this was the retrocardiac lesion on frontal chest X-ray. And uh, this was a case of COVID pneumonia with uh, complications and, and, and pneumomediastinum. Okay.
So very well done, Dr. Sandeep. So I will now stop sharing the screen. Thank you very much, Dr. Rohit, uh, for very great cases. And Dr. Sandeep, thank you for volunteering. Now you can start sharing the screen. Only one comment, use the uh, MDT sparingly. I mean, uh, we should do it for the oncology cases, I believe. Um, yeah. just, uh, just to use it a little bit less. Otherwise it was perfect, great cases. Go ahead, Dr. Sandeep, you can uh, share the cases. Okay, first case. Dr. Roy, can we start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want mouse, uh, control of the mouse? So if you can scroll, scroll, scroll the cases for me. Okay, I will, I will, I will scroll, okay, okay. Oh, uh, this is a 30 year old male who presented with a cuff. Yeah, I can see that uh, this is the frontal chest radiograph of a 30 year old patient who presented with the history of cough. Uh, I can see that, uh, <clears throat> I can see the widening of the right paratracheal stripe, uh, which appeared uh, slightly lobulated. And uh, I can also see uh, the lobulated uh, appearance of the left hilum and uh, suspicious enlargement of the right hilum also. So, uh, so uh, these findings uh, uh, suggest uh, that uh, there is uh, right paratracheal and uh, bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Uh, I'm not able to see any lung lesion uh, and visualize CP angles are uh, clear and uh, visualized bones appear unremarkable. So in a young patient uh, with history of cough and uh, which shows frontal, uh, which shows uh, hilar, bilateral hilar and the right paratracheal lymphadenopathy. My first uh, differential would be sarcoidosis, and uh, the other differential diagnosis would be definitely infective pathologies like uh, tuberculosis, or uh, less likely possibilities are uh, uh, lymphoma. So I would like to uh, take this further by. <clears throat> Uh, doing a CT chest, but before that, I would like to uh, look for any previous chest X-ray if available. If that is not the case, then uh, I would like to proceed it further by doing a CT chest and any other uh, laboratory data which is available. Well, Dr. Roy, can you look at the like, uh, left lower joint? One second, please. Can you review it? Left lower zone. Yeah. Uh, by reviewing the left lower zone, I can see that uh, there is an uh, there is an uh, round to oval of AST, which is uh, just above the left dome, and uh, <clears throat> there is uh, so it must be an, uh, a nodular lesion in the lung parenchyma. So it can be a subsegmental focus of consolidation uh, in the uh, left lower zone, and uh, with uh, lymphadenopathy. So uh, it could be infective etiology uh, like tuberculosis. Now your list of differential will change like uh, from top to bottom or it will remain the same? Then, uh, my first differential in a young patient uh, would be infective like tuberculosis and uh, the other uh, less likely would be sarcoidosis or uh, malignant like lymphoma. And, uh, sarcoidosis can also have lung involvement. Yeah, sarcoidosis can also present with the lung involvement, but uh, uh, that would be the, my second differential in this patient. One CT. Uh, this is the medicinal okay. okay. Yeah. So these are the <clears throat> actual CT images, contrast in one CT. In medicinal window shows uh, uh, mediastinal and bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. I cannot see any <clears throat> necrosis in the nodes. And uh, these, uh, these shows attenuation as of the muscles. And I cannot see any calcification or necrosis in the nodes. And uh, there is an area of uh, consolidation in the left lower zone. So uh, my differential would be infective like uh, tuberculosis and uh, other differential would be still uh, sarcoidosis and uh, lymphoma. So I would like to take this further by doing an, uh, a correlation with the sputum examination. Uh, then other things I would like to do is uh, 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 
biopsy of the lymph nodes, transbronchial biopsy to get a tissue sample and uh, diagnosis and uh, discuss with the case with the respiratory physician. Yes, yes. This is a 80 year old male who presented with acute central chest and bilateral jaw pain. Progressive with generalized weakness, history of hypertension and ischemic heart disease. Okay. So I can uh, see the frontal chest radiograph of a uh, uh, old patient who presented with uh, uh, ischemic symptoms. Uh, I can see that uh, the age related there is uh, 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 unfolding of the aorta and uh, uh, there are multiple uh, ECG leads which are projected, uh, which are projected of the lung field and uh, uh, I can see that uh, uh, there is an uh, uh, widening of the aortic knuckle uh, with a double shadow projected. Uh, so in a patient, uh, elderly patient, I'm suspicious of uh, uh, the features of uh, dissection, which may presented with such symptoms. And uh, uh, I cannot see any pleural capping on the left side or any pleural fusion. Uh, on bone window, I can see that uh, there are uh, old fractures and uh, no significant lung parenchymal lesion is there. Uh, so this finding could be a result of uh, a dissection or... Uh, a dissection or... Uh, uh, okay. I, I would like to take this further by doing an... Uh, uh, contrast CT or CT angiography of the thoracic aorta. Okay. Okay, this is the plain CT. Yeah, this is the plain CT. In the plain CT, I can see that, uh, yeah, the ascending aorta shows hyperdense wall, uh, which is uh, highly suspicious of uh, intramural hematoma. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> there is some dilatation of the ascending aorta. So I'm suspicious of uh, uh, intramural hematoma with the aortic, uh, yeah. Uh, in the CT angiography, I can see that uh, the ascending aorta is dilated and, and uh, correlating with the non-contrast uh, associated with the intramural hematoma. So uh, this is one of the presentation of the acute aortic syndrome. And uh, I would like to discuss the case with the intervention radiologist. And uh, uh, because the patient uh, can, can advance into <clears throat> hemopericardium or other complication like uh, dissection, so this needs to be taken up uh, for uh, endovascular, endovascular uh, stenting or other procedure. Okay. Like how you uh, divide it, like types? Any yeah, the, it is divided into stent for type A and B, and uh, it appears to be stent for type A, which requires urgent intervention. And anything beyond the aorta is stent for type B, which can be managed with, with drugs. So it since it is stent for type A, so it requires urgent intervention and uh, endovascular management. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay, this is a 50 year old me who presented with chronic shortness of breath. Okay. So I am provided with the chest radiograph of a 50 year old patient who is uh, who has a uh, chronic cough. And I can see that uh, uh, there is a, a patient is rotated and uh, the lung volumes are reduced. I can see that uh, bilateral uh, reticulonodular lesions are seen and uh, there are prominent interstitial opacities uh, which are seen in both lung fields. Uh, more prominent uh, 
uh, in the lower lung zones uh, with an picobasal gradient. And uh, there is uh, a, a slight asymmetry with uh, some increased opacification of the left, mid and lower lung zone. And uh, there is a loading of the left uh, dome of the diaphragm and uh, uh, left heart border. So uh, I am highly suspicious of uh, some chronic uh, interstitial process like uh, interstitial lung disease. So there may be an uh, acute uh, uh, superimposition of some uh, like infection, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> evident by uh, some sort of consolidation or uh, ground glass opacity in the left lower lung zone. So I would like to compare it with any previous radiography provided and uh, uh, take this further by doing an HRCT chest and the pulmonary function test and discuss with the uh, chest MDT. Okay. Uh, in the actual HRCT images, uh, I see that uh, 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 HRCT shows uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, bronchiectasis and bronchiolectasis and uh, there is uh, 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 interstitial thickening as well as uh, subpleural ground glass opacities and uh, honeycomb being uh, with an apicobasal gradient. So these features are highly suggestive of uh, uh, IPF uh, that is UIP pattern of uh, disease. I cannot see any uh, feature like uh, esophageal dilatation of uh, <coughs> secondary interstitial lung disease, or I cannot see any changes in the bones. So uh, uh, these features are highly uh, suspicious of uh, <coughs> UIP pattern of uh, interstitial lung disease. So I will discuss the case with the respiratory physician correlated with pulmonary function tests and uh, uh, see that if a lung biopsy can be done. Okay, thanks. Uh, this is a 70 year old male uh, who presented with cough, otherwise, well, with no relevant past medical history. Yeah, uh, this is a 70 year old male who presented mm -hmm. with cough. Uh, I can see that uh, there is an uh, <coughs> mediastinal lesion uh, projected over the right uh, lung field. And uh, the lesion has the lesion is merging medially with the uh, mediastinal shadow. Uh, lately, it has a well-defined uh, border uh, uh, with a uh, well-defined outline with a convex border with the <coughs> mediastinum. Uh, sorry, convex border. Uh, uh, the lesion is loading the uh, right heart border, and uh, uh, I cannot see any lung parenchymal lesion. Uh, these features are highly suspicious of uh, anterior mediastinal mass. Uh, since there is a loading of the right heart border, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, the anterior mediastinal lesions, uh, uh, this can be a uh, uh, lesion like uh, lymphoma, uh, teratoma, or uh, thymoma. So I would like to uh, compare it with any previous radiograph if done or uh, would like to take this further by doing an uh, CT chest of the patient, if available, okay. and discuss the case with the chest uh, physician. Okay, CT. Okay, so these are the contrast and non CT chest images of the patient. I can see that uh, there is a soft tissue lesion uh, with uh, some enhancement in the anterior mediastinum, and uh, the lesion, uh, uh, has some internal vascularity and uh, I cannot see any uh, 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 local invasion of the lesion, uh, invasion of other structures of the mediastinum or any pleural metastasis. So these features, uh, uh, the first differential would be an uh, 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 soft tissue lesion. Uh, this first differential uh, uh, would be lymphoma and other possibilities are uh, thymoma. I cannot see any calcification, so teratoma is uh, less likely. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would like to proceed further by doing an uh, image guided biopsy and uh, confirm the diagnosis. Okay. And discuss, discuss it in an uh, MDT. This is a 45 minute. This is the last case, okay? Oh, okay. 
this is a 45 year old female who presented with progressive shortness of breath okay uh, i am provided with a chest radiograph of a 45 year old female who provide, uh, who presented with progressive shortness of breath uh, uh, i can see that uh, uh, there is uh, there is enlargement of the uh, uh, central pulmonary vessels which are grossly enlarged uh, uh, both on the right and left side and uh, there is uh, peripheral pruning uh, and uh, uh, i can see that uh, lungs are slightly hyperinflated uh, with the flattening of domes and uh, uh, the, there is some uh, rotation of the sky uh, uh, rotation of the patient i can see both of the breast shadows i cannot see any obvious bony lesion or uh, cardiac size uh, ctr is normal so uh, i am uh, suspicious of uh, uh, pulmonary hypertension uh, with grossly enlarged uh, central pulmonary vessels and uh, uh, i would like to take this further uh, by comparing with any previous radiograph if available to look for the progression of the disease as well as uh, doing an uh, echocardiography and a ct of the patient uh to evaluate this further okay. uh on the ct contrast ct of the patient i can see that uh, the pulmonary artery as well as the both the right and left pulmonary arteries are grossly enlarged uh, which confirm uh, there is some calcification in the wall and uh, these are highly sus suspicious of uh, pulmonary hypertension so the cause could be uh, it could be primary pulmonary hypertension which is a diagnosis of exclusion or okay. it could be some um, uh, underlying lung pathology uh, for that okay. i would okay. like to... i can show, show you the lung yeah so in the lung widow i can see that uh, there is a mosaic attenuation of the lungs and uh, i cannot see any significant uh, lung parenchymal lesion so uh, these appear to be primary pulmonary hypertension and uh, uh, i would like to correlate with the echocardiography and discuss the case with the chest mdt okay what other cause can be can lead to this uh, the other causes could uh, could be uh, uh, it could be uh, some uh, uh, drug related or uh, or uh, some in uh, uh, it could be drug related or it could be uh, some underlying uh, uh, since i can see the calcification also uh, it could be primary disease of the pulmonary vessels or uh, uh, okay okay dr roy we'll stop here no okay. thank you Okay, uh, Dr. Roy, you did really very, very well. Okay, uh, this is a pulmonary hypertension, and the other cause can be uh, chronic pulmonary embolism. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Previous case. Uh, this case. Uh, this case was thymic. Uh, Uh, malignancy thymic carcinoma okay. Okay. the patient is a 70 i think 70 year old okay right and it's okay. not a multi compartmental yeah 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 so that point is against lymphoma yeah, against lymphoma yes yeah mm. and this uh this is you did uh, correctly it's a uip okay and again this is intra uh, mural hematoma of ascending type a okay. and uh, for type a it's like surgical emergency yeah yeah the intervention radiology won't handle it okay uh, we have a reservation to ct ways this one this one again there is a sarcoidosis 
क्योंकि लंग इन्वॉल्वमेंट कैन बी देयर लाइक स्टेज 2 लंग फ्यूजन एंड लंग पैरेंकमल इन्वॉल्वमेंट ओके ओके मे बी सम या ओके थैंक यू thank you dr sandeep and dr rohit very nice cases thank you so much yeah, very, very nice cases thank you dr sandeep uh, thank you thank you dr sama can i stop screen yes please dr ubada are you ready uh, now dr ubada would be the examiner and he would be examining me okay yeah i'm ready i'll share my screen yes please Okay, I can see your screen. Yes. Um, can I start? Yeah, I give you control. Oh, okay, and I'm starting the timer. Okay, so this is a hospital admission with acute renal failure, no pulmonary symptoms, seventy-five year old male. Um, should I go myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Just. So this is a hospital admission of an elderly patient who has presented with acute renal failure. a frontal chest radiograph which uh, demonstrates uh, a a speculated mass lesion involving the upper zone of the right lung i can see that the trachea is also pulled towards the right i can see apical pleural thickening um i can see loss of a uh, volume in the right lung there is blunting of both costophrenic angles um there is a uh, in element of interstitial thickening in both lung fields and there appears to be uh, some ill defined nodules as well involving the lower zone of the right lung um if uh, the, the patient has presented with acute renal failure however considering this uh, frontal chest radiograph in this elderly patient i am uh, i want to rule out the possibility of a neoplastic malignant lesion in the first instance and now i remember the patient is with acute renal failure so i can at least proceed with a ct chest if the i i cannot give the contrast to this patient okay and now i can see the magnified view and there seems to be that there is a cavity in which there is a soft tissue opacity and there seems to be an air crescent outlining this so uh, although i'm keeping neoplastic lesion as a possibility but the other uh, differential diagnosis would be an aspergilloma which is the fungal infection in a pre-existing lung cavity my uh, next step would still be a ct chest uh, for further evaluation okay can continue the okay no um, continue so i'm going to the ct now yes yes okay so this is um axial ct chest in the lung windows which demonstrates uh bullet formation in the left lung apex and a cavity in the right lung apex with um soft tissue opacity within it um this uh, uh, ct reconfirms the loss of volume in the right lung with uh, a collapse element of collapse and pleural thickening there is scarring in the right lung there is traction bronchiectasis as well and interstitial thickening um again i see um, uh, multiple areas of bullet formation in the right lung um and there is uh, these uh, this scarring and interstitial thickening again seen in the um right lung base now i'm coming to the left lung base and i can see that there is a nodule a soft tissue nodule uh, in the in the left lung as well now considering that this is a scarred lung with previous history of infection a nodule in the left lung and another nodule in a preexisting cavity i would keep aspergilloma and the fungal infection as my prime possibility and convey my findings to the clinician and uh there i would advise a follow up uh, ct or a, a ct chest or an x ray after the completion of the antifungal treatment to rule out the possibility of a malignant etiology which might be there okay, um just 
you're saying that the, this cavity has a soft tissue uh, component to it so, or, or in it with yes. every present sign exactly. uh, or every present around it. The yeah, and two main possibilities um, you're thinking about uh, here. And you uh, said the spodiloma is one of them. Yes. yes. The other, uh, at times we can see it in a healing tuberculous cavity as well. Um, when, when it's healing, then there's traction uh, of the cavity and there seems to be an air there. Um, if I may, I see another, uh, you know, a sort of cavity lesion in the left lung as well. So okay, the pos possibility remains between fungal and reactivation tuberculosis actually now. Okay, and uh, the patient uh, is not complaining of anything in the chest. It's uh, just rut yeah, routine for admission, chest X-ray. Uh -huh. So uh, does this uh, help you? Um, actually, with the fungal infection or with the, uh, with the TB, the patient should have clinically symptoms. So um, at the moment, really, I have no explanation how to correlate these findings with the fact that the patient is uh, clinically not unwell. Okay. Um, maybe a, a quote, I maybe compare with the previous x-ray uh, might help. And if the findings are in trouble stable over, over a period, um, I would let it be. Okay, okay. No, next case, uh, fine. Okay. Yes, so you should uh, still remain on the, yeah. No. Okay, I, I'm not touching the no mouse problem. actually. We both do, then it's, it doesn't respond. Okay, so this is a 18 month old male 18 month, cough for several days, temperature, increasing difficulty in breathing. Okay, so this is an 18 month old child who has presented with increasing difficulty in breathing. And in the first instance, I can see that there is a triangular opacity in the involving the upper zone of the right lung uh, with uh, with a sort of convex, uh, concave upper and a convex lower border towards the hilum. Now, this is a child, um, so I would be concerned whether there is um, obstruction at the level of the bronchi, which is causing this appearance in the chest x-ray. Um, so a foreign body or a mucus plug uh, would be my prime differential. Uh, which, which is leading uh, to this configuration of the, of the ch chest radiograph. Um, I would ask if there is a previous chest X-ray. Uh, if not, I would uh, consider this to be either a foreign body or a mucus plug causing these uh, symptoms in this child. Okay, but the patient presented uh, not suddenly, over a few days and with fever. And yeah. A cough. So... Um... Yeah, is... foreign body is less likely, but yeah, okay. still possible. Yes, uh, then an infective etiology and with over hypersecretion of the mucus leading to plugging. Uh, so I would keep pneumonia as viral pneumonia as a possibility and uh, advise a follow-up test x-ray after the treatment to see the resolution of, this, of the opacity or not. Okay, next case. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. So this is recurrent attacks of mild tepkipnea, uh, no other symptoms in a 20 year old male, recurrent attacks of mild tepkipnea. Okay, so this is a frontal chest X-ray of a young male patient who is presenting with recurrent attacks of tepkipnea. Um, so in this chest x-ray, I can see that there is a sort of tubular opacity involving the lower zone of the right lung. Um, there seems to be sort of dilated tubular structures in the right parahyla region as well. Um, I'm trying to see the left lung, uh, some mild, uh, Wrong uh, dilatation, tubular dilatation is also seen on the left side, however, less severe than the right. Um, I believe these might be due to dilated bronchi 
um, uh, in this patient, uh, what we call a bronchiectasis. Now, this is a young patient, um, and I would like to, I, I, so there are, I would like to correlate it with history. If the patient is asthmatic, this could be allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. The other differential for a lower zone um, bronchiectasis could be alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Yes, I, um, yeah, yes. sorry to interrupt you, but um, in the first finding you um, described, uh, can you elaborate on that and uh, okay. ignore the other findings? Okay. So I feel that there is a, 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 no, a there is a sort of oblong uh, opacity in the lower zone of the right lung, which has sort of branching pattern and going towards the hilum. So in a young patient, the uh, the differential, the prime differential, which I should be thinking of is whether this could be a pulmonary AV malformation. And for confirmation, um, I would compare with the prior chest X-ray, and for confirmation, I would go for contrast enhanced CT chest to further evaluate it further. Okay, it was there in the previous chest X-ray, and uh, we can go to. I'll, I'll continue to the CT. Okay. So um, I should go with the lung windows. Whatever, look at the images uh, as you like. Oh, okay. So uh, in in my first instance, I'm taking the axial images of the CT chest in arterial phase. So with the windows. And immediately I can see that there is a sort of a prominent pulmonary vasculature in the right lung with, uh, okay. So there seems to be a, a, a dilated venous structure which is draining into the IVC. So I believe, uh, let me see at the lung windows as well. Sorry. Just click on it. Just on it. Yeah. So in the lung windows, I can see that the uh, that the right lung has a lower lung volume as compared to the um, left. And if I may see the um, coronal images, then this this uh, this gives a typical sign, the Schmittar sign, which we see in the cases of partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. So this patient would be referred to pulmonary uh, pediatric cardiology for further management. And this would explain his symptoms of recurrent tachypnea uh, as he has partial anomalous pulmonary venous return. Okay. Uh, you can go to the next case. Okay. Uh, I'll click for you first. So this is a 40-year-old female treated uh, for psoriatic arthritis with adalimumab, presents with deranged liver function tests and fever. So I'm going to the next case, uh, next uh, slide. It's a 40-year-old female being treated for psoriatic arthritis. Uh, number two, number two. Sorry, yeah. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Okay. So um, um, this is frontal chest radiograph of a patient with psoriatic arthritis who was treated with a certain drug. I can see that there is bilateral symmetrical reticular nodular thickening involving both the lungs. Um, I do not see any zonal predominance. There is blunting of right costophrenic angle. I am looking at the um, joints which are which which are visible in this chest radiograph, and they do appear. There is nothing significant in them. Um, so, in this young patient with uh, reticular nodular and interstitial thickening pattern, I believe this is a case of drug-related interstitial lung disease. Um, I would. I, uh, I would like to correlate it at the previous test X-ray, and I can also evaluate it further with HRCT. Yes. Uh, can you just um, can you, uh, tell me if you think this is more of a nodular or a reticular, and in the nodules uh, size? Okay. So uh, when I see the nodules, um, it seems to like 
one to two millimeters, and there seems to be a sort of cavity or cystic appearance within it. However, there is reticular thickening as well. So there is a combination of the reticular nodular thickening, but the nodules are small, they're dispersed, and they do have a central halo within them. Okay, so uh, uh, HRCT is uh, indicated, we can go to number three. Okay, so now I'm clicking number three. Okay, so uh, this is HRCT in the lung windows. I'm scrolling craniocaudally, and I can see that uh, there is interstitial thickening and tiny nodules in both the lungs. Um, I'm trying to see if there is any cavitation within. There seems to be few areas of ground glass uh, opacification as well. Um, Can you tell me any, mainly the distribution of the nodules? Yes, the, they, they are predominantly in the bronchovascular distribution. Like it's along the uh, bronchovascular bundles. Um, I do not see any subpleural sparing. I do not see any honeycombing. Um, so basically, if I wouldn't have known that this is a patient of psoriatic arthritis with this uh, distribution of peribronchovascular nodules, I would have been thinking of sarcoidosis actually in this patient with pulmonary manifestation. Um, but because of the history of psoriasis and the drug uh, which the patient is take, taking, I'm thinking of as a drug induced uh, related interstitial lung disease. Uh, well, uh, let's, uh, if you focus on the nodules, most of yes. them are uh, spaced um, regularly apart and, and, and uh, not reaching the periphery exactly. And there is some uh, subtle sparing. And so it's centrally lobular. Yeah. Um, yes. So if I tell you this patient has widespread central lobular nodules, it's very small size, and after taking some drug for uh, inflammatory disease like psoriatic arthritis, what's your um, top differential? Mm, tuberculosis, uh, infection of tuberculosis. Yes, mediary TB. So mediary TB. Yes. One uh the, the yeah the inclination to take precautions and yeah uh, yeah okay uh i think there's another case uh okay if you want to so, so. okay so this is a 30 year old male stabbed to the left chest with kitchen knife chest pain and shortness of breath sat and blood pressure is normal so basically a 30 year old male with stabbing chest injury. Yes. Uh, so this is a frontal chest radiograph, which demonstrates um, left-sided, uh, significant left-sided pneumothorax with collapse of the left lung. Uh, the underlying collapse left lung demonstrates um, uh, uh, areas of pacification, which in the clinical setting of the clinical scenario is highly suspicious for contusions. I'm with this stabbing chest injury, I'm trying to look at the aortic contour to see if there is any dilatation or any uh, disruption of this contour. It looks fine. The right lung um, grossly appears unremarkable. I would pick up the phone and immediately tell the surgical team that this uh, patient has um, a tension pneumothorax with collapse of the left lung and mediastinal shift, which should be immediately relieved with the chest tube. And after the stabilization of the patient, um, a, a contrast-enhanced CT chest can be done for further uh, evaluation of the traumatic injury to the chest. Okay, the classic question is always, if, they, if you know that the patient is still in the department. Yes. Yeah, okay, so, so, so I would take a 14-gauge whiteboard tube and insert it in, in the uh, in the mid clavicular line at the level of sixth intercostal space, I believe, to relieve the second, uh, second intercostal uh, cannula. It's enough the, for the air management. Uh, in, okay. In, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was nice. Thank you so much, Dr. Bada. You can give the feedback now.
Okay, so this case, uh, mashallah, uh, all your uh, cases, you got the diagnosis. Uh, this is a uh, tension pneumothorax, this is the urgent thing. I would have preferred if you would like tell me why you think it's a uh, tension pneumothorax. Uh, yeah, uh, slight mid distance shift to the other side. And uh, um, yeah, the, the dome of diaphragm is slightly depressed. Uh, yeah, this is yeah. and yeah, and emphasize more that it's urgent and you, you should like um, um, from yourself uh, tell me, ask me if the patient's still in the department. I will uh, yeah, take immediate action, not wait for just yeah, no problem. And the next step for this patient, we will not just wait for the our immediate management with the uh, uh, cannula. Uh, we would suggest next to have uh, just a tube in, inserted uh, for this patient. As you said, you would insert the tube, but uh, this is after the initial management. Right. Okay. Uh, can go from beginning this patient in the first case. This one, um, it's it's a very um, surprising uh, appearance for uh, someone who's not complaining for uh, any uh, respiratory uh, symptoms. Right. Uh, but. Um, and uh, you should consider uh, patient had previous TB and uh, and uh, there is scarring and uh, and uh, cavity and patients with aspergillosis don't necessarily have any symptoms and uh, the fungus is uh, uh, well isolated and it will not respond to antifungal therapy. And uh, if the patient is not complaining of anything, you should not do anything for this patient. For, uh, just uh, you know, uh, wait, uh, wait. If the symptoms develop, especially hemoptysis, uh, then you have to uh, uh, ma manage accordingly. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and you got it, uh, all the signs. Uh, and maybe another thing they would ask, uh, you have two, two differentials here, uh, either yeah, two fungus-related differentials, uh, aspergilloma uh, or uh, angioinvasive aspergillosis. Mm. And, uh, and uh, how do you differentiate? Is this a air crescent sign or is this a monoid sign? Uh, um, the thing is, uh, if the patient's still there, you should uh, do a prone CT and check if the uh, ball is moving inside. Right. Then this is aspergilloma. And um, yeah, and also that the uh, uh, patient is not complaining of um, any respiratory symptoms. So this goes with aspergilloma rather than angioinvasive, which usually has a, a very bad, um, uh, a poor, poor, uh, not a well patient. Right. Next. Cough. Uh, so this. Yeah, you got this very, very. Well, um, but the, I would say just this is a, a sharp margin. So mm -hmm. I'm so I'm suspecting this is a left uh, right upper lobe uh, collapse. And since patient has uh, fever and uh, over a few days, not uh, any uh, sudden onset, um, uh, like what you said, uh, respiratory uh, viral infection, bronchiolitis will cause uh, can cause a collapse, a lower collapse in a child. And uh, this is important for uh, uh, the FRCR. Uh, you will not uh, do a follow-up chest X-ray if the patient is improving. Okay. If the patient is clinically improving, will not do um, chest X-ray. Yes, this is you got very very nice. Uh, it's very difficult from the in the beginning, but you got the, the finding very quickly. Uh, other findings I mean, depends maybe imaging, uh, but uh, the thing is, after you found this uh, and you, it looks like you know what you what you are yeah, what you are seeing. Uh, yeah, the, the other findings you can like um, just. Uh, to get more out of the case, yeah, yeah, there is the right, the left lung is large under the right, yeah, and uh, yeah, there is like clouding here, um, and also, yeah, uh, just, you should uh, on when, especially after we did yeah, the chest CT, 
uh, tell me like uh, is this uh, need to be managed what does not need to manage how do i know and uh, usually they would uh, check how, how much there's a uh, uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension uh, uh, they, yeah and if there is significant uh, hypertension then would, they will manage they will try to uh, change the course uh, to from the uh, left atrium to the right or by an, an, an numerous methods yeah. The, the, man, the management depends on uh, how how much there is pulmonary hypertension in, uh, in this patient. Right. Okay. Uh, other one. Yes, you got this, uh, but it's difficult. I, I I never heard of this uh, drug before. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's just more, but I, when I saw this uh, milliard distribution, and I didn't really pick up the the interstitial thickening. Mashallah. The thing is, uh, uh, on the HRCT, they they are any yani, central level nodules mainly. It's mainly right. central level nodules. So yeah. I would milliary and TB is the number one. Okay, and uh, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, we discussed this. Yes, we did. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Obrada. This was excellent feedback. Thank you so much. Because uh, these feedbacks are the one, you know, which we take home points from. Oh, Thank sure. you. Okay, now let me share the screen. Um, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Cute and so, Yes, your uh, your time starts now. I'll give you the control when I come to the CT, okay? Acute onset pleuritic chest uh, pain, uh, shorts of breath, no trauma in a 20-year-old male. Can we see? Yeah. So I'm presenting the frontal uh, chest radiograph of uh, the male patient. Uh, I'm presented with shorts of breath and uh, uh, I'm looking at the lung fields. Lung fields appear clear. Uh, heart size appears normal. There is uh, around the heart, the the left, especially the left heart border, there is a lucency. Uh, yeah, and so I know more, it's extending up into the, uh, the, uh, the mediastinum, so it's a new mediastinum. Uh, Very nice. So uh, what is the extent of this linear lucency you are seeing? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, yeah it's extending from, I'm, I'm, what I'm seeing here is the around the left uh, heart border, extending yeah. uh, uh, through the Hyder region up into the around the aorta, there is yes. still uh, lucency still seen. Okay. So it's uh, normal just time. Um, patient, oh, first time, time could be uh, due to several causes, could be spontaneous or uh, uh, traumatic or. Uh, okay, so what yeah. next? Yeah. And you try to find the cause. If there's clinically no, uh, no apparent cause, we'll continue with just CT, try to find the cause. Okay, I'm giving you the CT and the control is with you. Go ahead. So this is a uh, chest CT, the wrong window, Excel images. It's a contrast enhanced CT. Uh, uh, here we can confirm that there is a long time. Yep. Extending up and surgical emphysema. I'm trying to find the cause. So, as you said, the cause can be idiopathic or traumatic or post intubation uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, idiatrogenic uh, esophageal instrumentation. Yes. Okay. That's good. We're going to go to the next case. Uh, uh, you can leave the mouse. I'll go to the next case. Okay. Yeah. 
So no data. Okay. Go ahead. The case is yours. Okay. So um, I'm presenting with the frontal uh, chest radiograph of another patient uh, showing um, right upper uh, zone, top, right upper zone uh, opacity with a sharp uh, S-shaped uh, anterior border. Uh, and, and another patient suggests uh, a hilar mass or central mass with the uh, uh, right upper lobe uh, collapse. Uh, this could be confirmed if on the lateral uh, uh, radiograph, uh, if available. Okay, uh, okay. ignore the lateral. Next. Oh, okay, um, confirm, I would like to confirm this with the GCT with the contrast. Okay. Uh, uh, can you explain to me the parts of the, what is this? You said the sign, maybe I I missed it. Yeah. Did you say that? What is no, the night sign? I just said this S-shaped. Uh, golden S sign, yes. Yeah, golden so S. what are the two parts of the golden S sign that you can see here? Yes, it's uh, inferiorly convex and uh, uh, and uh, concave uh, superiorly. So yes. this is just uh, the mass here in the uh, right higher region. Yes, so the convexity is because of the hilar mass, you were saying, right? Yes. Okay. So do you see any air bronchograms here? Not really, no. Okay. So what does that indicate? Collapse. Okay. There is complete airway obstruction, as you said. Yeah, a chronic so, collapse. Uh, exactly. So give me three reasons of collapse here in, a, in, a, in an X-ray, which you can see. Okay. Uh, Collapse, if it's acute, uh, mm -hmm. um, it, it could be due to foreign body, mucus plugging, uh, or, mu yeah, or mucus plugging. Uh, Excellent. Uh, collapse with consolidation can hap happen with infections. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, on a more chronic, it could be due to tumors. Excellent. Very yeah. good. So what is your next step? What will you tell the clinician? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm suspecting a higher mass with the, uh, with the right upper lobe collapse. And uh, I need uh, just CT with contrast to further characterize and... Uh, yes, perfect. Okay. This might be a repetition, but doesn't matter. Okay, 30-year-old me, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So it's, uh, I'm presented a frontal graph of an adult. 30 year old male patient with cough. Uh, there is a bilateral uh, hilar enlargement, uh, lobulated enlargement with uh, right paratracheal lobulated enlargement. Uh, run fields uh, clear, clear apart from the left uh, lower zone, which is uh, apparently rounded uh, opacity. Okay, so your differentials, yeah. differential diagnosis. Yeah, differential, uh, bilateral hilar and the right paratracheal, the number one is uh, sarcoidosis, mm -hmm. and triad, but, uh, but uh, lymphoma yes. uh, should be considered, uh, even though that looks... Uh, yeah, I'm asking for differential, it doesn't matter. Yes, as you said, sarcoidosis, lymphoma, anything else? Yeah, it could be infection. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm giving you CT. We have discussed the CT before. I just want you to describe for me the CT lung findings and the differential. Okay. So, uh, uh, so we're seeing uh, this is the lung window. Yep. Okay. And uh, it's some interstitial uh, thickening. Right. Uh, um, and if you can scroll up and down. Oops, or you, uh, 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 can you click on your screen? If you click once, then you should be able to. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. We both have the control. We just have okay. to click on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's throughout the lung, uh, yeah. these findings, and uh, in the uh, both lower uh, lobes, there are considerations uh, noted. Um, I'm yeah, I just uh, we know yeah. uh, as we said we we know that this is a case of sarcoidosis because it was discussed before. I just yeah. need to know that can you, you we can see the nodules as well, right? Small nodules. 
Yeah, yes, that, that's where they're pointing. Yeah, yes, yes. these are like in. Can you describe the distribution? That's all I need. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, almost yeah. There is uh, there are nodules in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, around this uh, fissures and septi. So yeah, very so, fissural. Yeah, so that gives a uh, more uh, perimphatic uh, distribution. Uh, okay, excellent. Okay, so we have perifissural and peribronchovascular nodules. We have um, interlobular septal thickening. Uh, I just need one, uh, I'm asking a question that if I have a nodular or irregular septal thickening, give me two differentials for it. Yes, um, uh, this sarcoidosis or uh, yeah. and, uh, and lymphangitis custom. Excellent. Yes, very nice. Uh, what is the lab test for sarcoidosis, which would look nice if we tell to the examiner? Yes, um, <coughs> sarcoidosis. No worries. Usually, yeah, yeah, I yeah. know it, but uh, subhanAllah, yeah. it's now. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is hot seat. No worries. I know <laughs> this happens. It's okay. We'll come back to it later. You can go ahead with the next case. Click on your screen and start it. Clinically established scleroderma, shots of breath, uh, 75 uh, year old female. Yeah. I'm presenting the frontal uh, chest radiograph of a 75 year old female who presents with uh, shots of breath. Um, Okay, so I'm, uh, I think she has, uh, she's uh, the old uh, diagnosed already with scleroderma. Um, I'm seeing bilateral uh, reticular uh, shadowing uh, in the lung fields. Good. Lung volume still uh, normal. Mm -hmm. Heart uh, size appears normal. Mm -hmm. Classification towards knuckle, which is normal for age. Uh, expect uh, in a patient with scleroderma, I'm trying to find uh, if there's dilatation of the esophagus. Okay, good that you mentioned. Go ahead. Uh, can, can you uh, give me sort of a distribution? How does the distribution of the... the reticular shadowing is? It's mainly lower, lower zones. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. You can go ahead. What would you like to do next? Yeah. Um, in, in, this, in this patient, uh, I'm worrying about... Uh, and yeah, complications of scleroderma it could be uh, aspiration uh, uh, pneumonia. Uh, Do you feel that there is any uh, mnemonic changes or opacification? Yeah, on the heart, in, uh, maybe it, uh, in here centrally in the lower zones, it's more than more than just uh, reticular shadowing. Maybe there is some. Okay. So some, what would you what would you recommend to confirm? Yeah, just it is easiest thing to. Yes, go ahead. Press number three, and you'll have the okay. RCT. Go ahead. You can describe it. So this is high resolution chest CT, long window, axial cuts. Uh, the same patient uh, scrolling, and they are in interstitial uh, thickening. Yeah, uh, laterally with um, subcural yeah. um, encumbering, uh, or mm -hmm. though yeah, not, uh, yeah, it's uncombing. Trac some traction bronchiectasis. Okay. Bilateral in the lower zone, mm -hmm. uh, or lobe. With the mouth. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now we have um, uh, honeycombing and uh, interstitial thickening, bronchiectasis changes, uh, traction, mainly in the lower zones, more mm -hmm. in the lower zones. Uh, think of uh, interstitial disease, UIP pattern, but we mm -hmm. have scleroderma, so it shows secondary to scleroderma. Excellent. Okay. Now I'll give you a, a last a case. If you can give me this control because the time is up. Uh, this is a retired female with prior history of breast cancer, left sided thoracic pain. Okay. So go ahead. 
Yes. So frontal tissue growth of uh, other female patients who had the previous breast cancer and now presenting with the left sided uh, chest pain. Mm -hmm. There is absence of the left uh, breast shadow. Excellent. And wrong, I'm looking at the wrong uh, fields. I'm trying okay. to find any nodular shadowing. Lung fields are clear. Oh, okay. Um, heart size is normal. Yep. I'm looking at the bones, trying to find any. Uh, Reasons. Sorry, the bones? Are, the bones, bones. I'm looking mm. at the ribs. Yeah. Uh, the right uh, third, third rib is really, maybe there's a, a lucency. Inside. The right third rib is fine. Okay. Do you remember where the chest pain was? Which side? The yeah, left side. It's sorry. Yep. Yeah. No um, worries. It's mm. tough, when, especially when you're in the hot seat. Yes. So left side. Oh, yeah, yes. there is a... Uh, a fracture in the left mid uh, uh, thoracic rib. Okay. Uh, laterally. Okay. Uh, if I can zoom, no, I cannot. Come on. Uh, this fracture has like callus formation around it. Uh, okay. Why are you saying callus formation? Do you think? Um... It's uh, not. Oh, sorry. The... I'm trying to enlarge for you and it's going. Yes. Yeah, so... so, okay. What do you uh -huh. think? Yeah, it is a fracture. What else is there? And it could be soft tissue component. In the patient with breast cancer, yeah, should be suspecting a soft tissue component. Yes. So, yeah. what do you think the rib? The rib has what yes. kind of pattern? Uh, um, the bone matrix is what? Sclerotic. Excellent. So, this is in a breast cancer. Yes. Yes. And so, um, suspecting of metastasis into this rib. Rip, excellent. This is a very good pick because even I was, uh, you know, uh, sorry, I was struggling with it. So this is good. Uh, uh, Dr. Abada, very well done. Thank you so much. We'll just have a quick review of the uh, uh, cases you did. So as you said, see, this is sclerotic area. Yes, you're right. There seems to be a pathological fracture and sort of soft, you know, callus formation. But what uh, what is it? Look at the bone density of all the adjacent ribs. And this is clearly sclerotic. So this is sclerotic rib mets. And this is one of the one of the you know uh, our review areas which we should be looking for. This is very well picked up. You know, usually in scleroderma, why when I thought of scleroderma, I thought of NSIP. Usually with connective tissue disease, we are thinking of non-specific interstitial pneumonia. But as you know, the the real life does not follow the uh, the the mm -hmm. books. And plus, we have connective tissue uh, related UIP as well. And there is no esophageal dilatation. Can you see? Yes, he yes. is just, uh, there is no, so this is a sort of confusing, but very well done for you that when you saw the honeycombing, you saw the epicobasal gradient, you saw the interlobular and intralobular thickening. There is no subplural sparing. If there was subplural sparing, we would have thought about NSIP, but you no. are absolutely right. This is scleroderma related uh, UIP pattern. Excellent, well done. The other one which I was showing you, uh, uh, which was discussed previously as well, regarding the sarcoidosis, I, you know, um, perfectly done, but all I need and all I, we want to uh, practice is some buzzwords with the, you know, perivascular uh, distribution, okay. perifacial distribution, subplural, you know, all these things, uh, which when the examiner hears, he will be happy, you know, and yes. it would be less stressful for us. So this is just practicing for that. Otherwise, it's perfectly fine. And as always, you know, the people who have gone through the examination, they will tell you uh, the, reaching the right diagnosis is not important. Giving a sensible differential diagnosis and knowing how to, you know, uh, support it is important. We might be wrong, but the way we present the case, that's important. So very well done. This, I have no complaint regarding this. You perfectly uh, told me what is the concave part, what is the lower convex part, yeah. and how the, uh, what are, can be the three reasons of uh, the plugin. This one very well picked up. You know, it's subtle, um, but you clearly saw it. What I wanted to point out, I even missed it retrospectively because in the, in the CT chest, you can see that the uh, air force side going into, this, into the neck mm -hmm. as well. Yes, now, yes. when you see it, you can see thin linear pattern of air going through it. I hope mm -hmm. it's visible even in the neck. But even in the first go, I didn't see. But what I would 
recommend, but I should also practice. Once we see the Nemo Vijayasthanam, at least make an attempt. And if you can't see it, say that I'm trying to see the Air Force Eye in the supraclavicular soft shoes or in the chest wall, but I can't see any. This will give you marks, right? So thank you so much, Dr. Ubada. It was excellent. L was presented. Thank you, everyone who stayed late at night for this. And uh, inshallah, we hope to see you next time. If anybody wants to make any comments, you are welcome. Otherwise, we can close the meeting. It's a very good uh, uh, array of cases. Uh,